How much power can you get out of a Blue Eti EB55 power pack? Guess we're going to find out. This is the Blue Eti EB55 portable power station. It has a 700 watt AC pure sine wave inverter and a 537 watt hour capacity. The lithium battery has over 2,500 life cycles, up to 80%, and it's chock packed with 11 outputs for multiple devices. There are six ways to recharge this portable power station AC, solar, off your car, another generator, or combinations of AC and solar, or just as many ACs as you've got. It has a 200 watt max solar input and a 400 watt max fast dual charging if you're using solar and AC. This portable power station is eco-friendly, gas-free, quiet, and incredibly cost-effective. Here she is, and the first test of the morning. Let's get the phone charging. Wait, why is it not charging? Um, I need to press one of these. She's at 100%. There you go, she's charging. Needs to charge up for 30%. Apparently that will take 29 minutes. Despite my difficulties, the Blue Eti isn't that hard to use. Maybe you just gotta read the instructions. When you're camping in a place with no signal, just put it on airplane mode and phone hardly uses any battery. It's only really to take pictures of this thing anyway. Next job, first thing in the morning, gonna need some coffee. Yes, that is my Kmart kettle from home. Now I know what you're thinking, is probably not designed to power household appliances. And you're probably right, but I wanted to see and give this a go. Can this portable power station power a 2200 watt electric kettle? It's not even designed to go over 700 watts, I don't think. Surely it can't power this, but I've had power packs that can run it before. They just kind of run it on a lower wattage. So it still works, but it just takes ages to boil. Will this one be able to cope? It doesn't work. That's the first test failed. Well, in that case, let's get it running my camping fridge instead. She's on. You can hear the compressor. And she's working back to get it back to temperature. Still says overload though. I hope that's gonna fix itself. Cause I don't know how to fix it. I don't read instructions, but it is still cold. I'll have to boil my kettle some other way, won't I? With the kettle finally boiled and the sun warming up, it's time to enjoy a nice cup of coffee and let the baby have some warm milk, I guess. Even Aurora could have some hot chocolate, but no thanks to the Bluetti at the moment with its limited inverter. Surely we can power some other kind of electrical device to put something nutritious in our stomachs. A few moments later. Let's see if we can't do some cooking. Now yet another Kmart special with a 1,800 watt electric fry pan. Let's see if this can't cook up some bacon. And yes, I know 1,800 watts might be a little bit too high, but it does have a temperature control. So if we just turn it down, slow cooked bacon's better than no cooked bacon, right? Well, this bad boy is saying overload, which is no good. So we can't power the electric fry pan off of this bad boy, even if it's on the lowest setting. What can we power? Frustrated with what it could actually power, I started to look into things that I could perhaps charge with the Blue Eti. For example, if I had a 75 watt TV, I could run that for five to six hours. I could recharge my electric tools, power my smartphones for nearly two days, run LED lights for about the same time. Or if I had a medical condition that needed it, I could run my CPAP machine overnight. My thoughts then turned to the overall weight of the Blue Eti, and while it's a small size unit, at nearly seven and a half kilos, it was perfect to do some extra exercise. And then I realized I disconnected it and had forgotten that one of the main reasons I was using it was to run my fridge. One hour later. She's on about 80% now. Let's just see how it goes. I'm trying to get the freezer down so we can get the Zupa Dupas colder. Because everyone loves a cold Zupa Dupa, preferably a frozen one. Now with not much success of trying to power household grade, high wattage appliances, to be fair, they were really never gonna work, were they? We decided to go into town and find some food that probably would run in something that Bluetti claims it can run for about two to three hours hours, which is a slow cooker, but we didn't have any appropriate food that you could put in it. So we decided to drive into town and try our luck. On the drive, I did think about other more sensible appliances I could run. Like if I'd brought a MacBook, depending on whichever one I'd have, it'd probably have it fully charged within two hours, but I don't have a MacBook. Even while driving, I could have topped up my Blue Eti on the car outlet. And depending on which outlet you use, 12 or 24 volts, it's going to take either six or three hours. And I've got both in my car, but the battery was powering my fridge. I wish I'd had a solar panel for it, like a Bluetti SP200. That'd have the thing charged back up again within four to four and a half hours. One minute, 37 seconds later. So, so far, we've not been able to use the electric fry pan, the kettle, charge up some little things like the camera, phones. I'll stick my drone in in a second. She's so been doing the fridge so far. And that's been running pretty successfully. It's on about 80% so far right now. But if you're wondering what these things can actually cook, 
I brought one of these. A good old slow cooker. So we've been into town to get some beef. I've got the biggest potato known to man. Pre-bought some spices and things. Let's see if we can't make a stew. And in typical chef fashion, I just threw everything in the pot. It's one of those recipes that tastes better than it looks. Added the beef. Let's see if this thing can actually run for the few hours that it needs to to cook stew. Bloody hope so, otherwise I don't know what we're gonna do for the food. Stew is prepped. See you in six hours. So we left the slow cooker to run on the absolutely lowest setting and it was running on that and all of our dreams of having a warm meal later. But for six hours, what would we do? Well, just go around the rest of the campsite and enjoying the delights that you can have whilst camping with kids and not thinking about all of the other essential outdoor appliances that I could have run on my Bluetti, like a radio or a projector. What else would be a low wattage camping appliance that I could have run? Silly me with my kettle and electric fry pan. It's never gonna work. I could have run 11 devices simultaneously and I chose to bring along two of the worst choices that I could have brought. But nevertheless, with all of the swimming and the freezing cold water, it was absolutely freezing by the way, I couldn't help but think how much more capable this unit would be if I'd have had an alternative way to recharge it. Oh, and it's got a light. Six and a half hours later. So after a few hours of waiting, it got dark. But that's okay, because we've got a battery pack to power our lights. And waiting in the dark isn't so much of a problem when you've got a nice fridge of cold beer. But eventually we had some stew. Not so much the batteries problem, just the time it takes to cook things that are in a slow cooker. And it tasted pretty good too, even out of a kiddies bowl. Definitely a taste better than it looks kind of thing. So what do we think of the Bluetti EB55? Well overall, it's not a bad power pack. There's a random dog. It isn't mine. This system is perfect for anyone that wants to go away camping for a few days. Let's start with what it can do. All of your small devices, your camping kit, this thing can pretty much power it all for at least a day possibly more. Great if you're just camping for the weekend. And with all the choices that you've got, you're pretty much gonna be the envy of anyone else who needs extra power. Off this thing, I've charged cameras, I've charged drone batteries, I've charged phones. I've even charged phones wirelessly off the little wireless pad at the top. I've charged camping fridges, and I've even run a slow cooker to cook a stew. And that wasn't even a camping one, that was from Kmart. Now, if you've never used batteries in this way, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to calculate how long is your appliance gonna actually last for. This unit is just over 500 watt hours. So depending on what you're trying to power off it, for example, my fridge was using about 40 watt hours when the compressor was going, that means that this unit could power my fridge for over 13 hours. But that's not even taken into consideration the fact that the compressor is probably gonna click in and out every time. That's 13 hours of purely running it to cold. So the way that fridges work, especially camping fridges which are super efficient, you're actually gonna end up powering the unit for much, much longer. In the case of my slow cooker when it's running on the lowest power setting, just under 100 watts. Again, that means that I can power my slow cooker in excess of six hours more than enough time to get a nice meal going. But what aren't you gonna power off this thing? Well, believe it or not, there is only so much power in it. And at 537 watt hours, this thing isn't gonna last forever. You're not gonna power any non-camping appliances that are over 700 watts. We tried that, and if you do manage to get something to work, you're gonna rinse the battery so quickly. What will I be using this for? Well, that's literally it. Camping for the weekend, I need to charge all my small devices, and I need to run my camping fridge. Don't push this thing to the absolute limits and expect it to overperform because disappointingly it probably won't. But that's not the point. It's not supposed to do that. What could I do to up its game and make it last a little bit longer? Probably look into one of the solar panel packs that it's got as well. Or if you've already got a solar panel, most of them are, most of them are gonna go into that input anyway. So this would be great as an additional battery to your system. Why are these things so good? It's got all of the inverters, all of the charging points, everything already built into this one device. No need to muck around and have everything else. You can just plonk it straight into the back of your car or your ute and away you go. Or if you are worried about power and you're super cheeky, just bring along the charger with you and use one of the power points at the amenities. Unless you're super bush camping and there is no power at all, probably gonna be able to charge her up anyway. If you're full on bush camping and you're without power and you don't have solar, it's not really gonna last forever but that's probably not what you're buying it for. So if you're interested in a Bluetti EB55 or any Bluetti products for that matter, I'll put a link down in the description below. Take a look today, you never know they might have a promotion on and you can get your products even cheaper. And if you use the link that we have in our description, any purchases made will get a small commission and it really helps the channel out. Since filming this video, we've just been informed that the EB55 is now out of stock and probably won't be available again. But since using this Bluetti, we've been more than impressed with the overall quality of the units. And we'd be really interested in using a larger power station, particularly for future camping trips. And if you want to see more on us camping in Australia or some of the other products that we use, check out this video.
and I can see who that random dog's owner is. See you later. Come on, mate. Who do you belong to? Let's take you back. <laughs>